Jesus, when he was on the earth, he spoke to people with the parables. So also Jesus, when he was on the earth, he spoke to many and gave many promises to every one of them. It is written in the book of the Holy Bible, in all the four Gospels, and especially in the Gospel of St. John, the fourth Gospel. The Bible clearly says, Jesus, when he was on the earth, he said, I am the living water. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the light and the resurrection. He who believes in me shall surely rise up from his death. In this world you will have trial and tribulation, but be of good cheer, because Jesus said, I have overcome the world. The Bible also says, Jesus, when he was talking and addressing to the crowd and explaining the word and parable, Jesus used to say, if you believe in me, believe also in my Father. If you know me, you can see my Father. If you do not know me, you cannot see my Father. Very clearly, Jesus used to mention every one of them. The Bible says, he also said, I will never leave you, never forsake you. If you believe in me, you shall be in the kingdom of God. Where I am, there also you shall be. But Jesus spoke so many such promises and promises after promises he has given to every follower and most of the time to the disciples he was speaking and he was telling them. Now remember very carefully when you talk about disciples. Disciples are not only them, those are apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, priest, teacher, elders, whatsoever you name them. Not only them, but all those who follow, for them the word of God says, they are my apostles, they are my followers. So apostles means follower. And Jesus spoke like this many things to the apostles and also the disciples. Disciples are we that we follow him and he is our leader and we follow his foot, footprints, our footsteps so that we shall do everything what is pleasing in the sight of God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord we shall learn the truth and the truth shall set us free. Therefore Jesus was giving so many other promises. Jesus also said you must have faith in God and you must also have faith in me. Jesus also said without the faith it is impossible to please God. He was on the earth, he was doing the miracles, he was doing the signs and wonders. When the signs and wonders, everything used to happen, Jesus used to tell them, put your faith in God. Put your faith in the word of God. Put your faith in God. And then he was encouraging them. That's why Jesus used to say, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So also he used to say, if you have a faith, you should be able to understand, it doesn't need a big faith for you. You should have a faith like a mustard seed. The smallest the mustard seed you can take it, then even if you are having the system of faith, you can move the mountains. You can take away your troubles. You can sail to the other shore without any problems and troubles. Every problem that you face in your life, you shall be successful in that. That's what Jesus Christ of Nazareth was explaining. Today's message is taken connected to one of the words that Jesus spoke. And Jesus spoke this word. To the disciples, those who are following him. And the Bible clearly says, the purpose of, his, purpose of his speaking was to encourage the people and make them to understand the truth, the word of God, which is very, very important. Last week also we talked that without the word of God, many get lost into this world. Without the word of God, many do not know what exactly we are supposed to do. You people put your trust in pastors. But what God says, put your trust in God. Put your trust in the word of God. Put your trust in the Lord. Trust the Lord fully. Do not put your trust in man. When you put your trust in man, or when you put your trust in man, you are cursed. We are under curse. So not to have any curses upon us, let us put our curse in God. Sorry. Let us put our faith in God. And whatever Jesus says, we shall follow. The Bible clearly says, today's, in today's message, in Luke chapter 8. But before we read the message, I would like to read something from Gospel of, Gospel of St. Luke chapter 7. Gospel of St. Luke chapter 7, the Bible clearly says, Jesus performs two important miracles. And if you read before also the chapters, Jesus was performing so many miracles, but here Jesus performed two miracles. One miracle that he saved a servant of a centurion who was dying and who was at the last stage. Second one, he raised the dead from the deathbed. And 
this miracle is mentioned in verse chapter 7 verse 1 the bible says now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people he met jesus jesus entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die when the word of the Lord clearly says he was ready to die, it means he was well up. He never wanted to live. He said, enough, my sickness cannot be healed. I do not want to live. Probably these verses, you must have not heard. Many people, those who say this, many people, those who suffer with different types of cancers, and when the pain is too much, and when the pain is unbearable, they come to this state. And what they say, no, I don't want miracles. I don't want healing. It is better for me to die. This was the status of the centurion servant too. The Bible says, And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. He was ready. He said, I don't want any healing now because I am put up of this pain and this agony and sicknesses. I don't want to live anymore. And he was preparing himself to die. Chapter, say chapter 7 verses 11 to 17 says, in the same chapter, verses 11 to 17, the Bible clearly says, What exactly happened? And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow and much people of the city were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bar, and they that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. The word of the Lord clearly says about these two miracles in chapter 7. Number 1, the centurion servant who was very badly sick was ready to die. Jesus Christ of Mary heals him. How? The Bible says the centurion sends a word to Jesus Christ to come to him. And Jesus Christ of Mary gets ready and along with the servant of centurion, he goes back to the centurion's house to heal that servant. When he was on the way, the centurion looks unto him from afar off. He saw Jesus is walking towards his house. He also saw Jesus along with Jesus. His servants are also coming to the house. Then the servant, the centurion runs toward Jesus and says to Jesus, What did he say? He said, You are come to my house. My house of me, we are not worthy. You cannot come to my house because I am an unworthy servant. I am an unworthy man. But I have an authority. I'm a centurion, I'm a leader, I'm the army, and I know what is the meaning of authority. And he said to Jesus, Jesus, it is enough you don't come to my house. I'm unworthy for you to receive or to, for you to come to my house. Just speak the word, just speak the word, just say one word, and my servant who is at home will be totally healed. Jesus was surprised about his faith. He is just saying that one word you speak, Jesus, and my servant will be up. Uh, totally alright, who was ready to die, who was at the deathbed, and all of the servants of this centurion were also there with Jesus, they were also shocked. But looking unto his faith, Jesus looks unto him and says, Because of your faith, you have such a great faith, and I have not seen such a faith in Israel, and because of your faith, you go and see your servant. By the time you reach him, by the time you reach unto him, he will be totally alright. And Jesus departs from there, and his servants, the centurion servants, go back to see his servant who was sick, and he is already healed. The first miracle, in chapter 7, the second miracle is after that is finished, the Bible clearly says that Jesus was getting into the town for nine. When Jesus was entering into the town nine, suddenly he saw a funeral service taking place, a funeral is happening, a mother crying very bitterly along with the son's the dead body and all the people of that town taking his dead body for the burial and Jesus is entering into the gate of night. And they were coming out of that gate of night. Then immediately he stopped that and he prayed for the dead man to 
because he had compassion upon that mother. The Bible clearly says she was weeping very badly. She was sorrowful. This woman's expression is given that she had only one son. Having one son, not only that, but she had all the hope in that son. But having this son, she was also a widow. She did not have any other help, and her help is gone away. Jesus looking unto her, having compassion upon her, immediately spoke to that boy, and the boy got up from the dead bed. My brothers, my sister, after having these two miracles, that the Bible clearly says, Jesus comes in the chapter 8, which is very, very important for you to understand. In chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible clearly says, when it came to pass afterward, that he went throughout every city and village. Jesus did not stop. Jesus was all the time doing the ministry. Now here he is going to preach the word of God to every city. He went to every city to preach the word of God. Judea, Samaria, Atamos, Pass of Samaria, everywhere Jesus was going. He was preaching at the seashore. He was preaching at the mountain top. He was preaching in the houses. He was preaching in the houses where people were sick. He was also preaching small houses, big houses, everywhere. Everywhere, wherever Jesus entered, he was preaching. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 8, afterward Jesus also went to every city and every village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Here is the message beginning. The Bible place says that Jesus went on preaching to every village, every city, and when he was telling them about the good things, about the good news, about the kingdom of God, about that every man should get into the kingdom of God. When Jesus was speaking, the twelve disciples, the twelve apostles also were with him. Then verses 22 to 25. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raising of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. The Bible clearly says in verse 24, and they came to him and awoke him. Jesus was in the boat, Jesus was sleeping in the boat, all the apostles were with him, twelve, and after seeing such a miracle in chapter 7, why did I go back to chapter 7? So you shall understand these disciples. These twelve disciples, they saw the miracle when they were with him. The Bible says all oh, these twelve disciples were with Jesus Christ of Nazareth when he was preaching the gospel, when he was performing the miracle, when he was doing signs and wonders, they were with him. They saw that he healed the century of servant just by word not even touching him. And the servant was healed. They also saw that he touched the man who was totally dead and the dead man came back to life and this boy was given unto his mother and she was very happy to see the dead boy coming back to life. Disciples saw these miracles. Now disciples are sitting with him in the lake and all the twelve disciples are with him. And when there was a storm in the lake, the Bible clearly says, and they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and he raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm. Then he speaks to the wind, then he speaks to the storm, then he speaks to the lake, then he speaks to all the oceans there and everything became calm because there was a poisonous wind which was going on and the ship was tossed up and down. Not only really that, there was a water in the ship and when the ship has some water, there are chances for that ship to be drowned. And when they will be drowned, or they will have drowned, definitely all of them will have perished. But they forgot what they forgot. That is what we are going to see. And the actual message is tonight, in verse 25. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? Then Jesus took them to all the disciples, and he asked them a question. Where is your faith? Tonight we are having the same message on regards to faith. And 
we have heard so many messages about faith but tonight we are having the message about faith hearing what Jesus said unto us what Jesus said unto his disciples whatever Jesus spoke unto his disciples that is what we are going to see because Jesus spoke about faith in many words Jesus encouraged the disciples and the people with faith in so many other valuable, uh, valuable you know, signs and wonders. They also said that faith is very important, which is the gift of God. They also said that faith is very important because it is the fruit of the Spirit. After explaining all that, Jesus is coming and telling them, Where is your faith? In Luke chapter 8, verse 25. My brothers, my sister, Every time I speak about the problems of the life, because I'm also a human being going through so many other problems. It is not the pastor those who preach does not have problems. No. It is not the people those who hear the word of God and come well dressed to the church, they don't have problems. No, they have problems. Some have job problem, some has family problem, some have children problem, some has the problem in the family itself. Some of them those who are having problems in their offices, some of them are having problems in their own ways. Some of them are having problem of losing our dear ones this morning also. Three patients in great family hospitals are you know, advocate for coronavirus. And God gave us the strength to pray for them for the food. One was three days already over and was not getting all right. My brothers, my sister, having this in my mind I prayed. I said, Lord, I have faith in you. And I am going to pray for this man in faith only. He is in the hospital. I am in the house. We are speaking over the phone. You have to perform a miracle. You have to perform a miracle. If Jesus was working miracles 2020 years ago, today also he has to do the miracle. Because he is alive. He was dead for us. He died for our sins. He was buried because of us. But third day. But third day. But third day. He rose again and he is a living God. He is living among every one of us. He is here to do the miracle. He is here to do the signs and wonders. What he did 2000 years ago or 2020 years ago. Today also he is able to do it. And then slowly somebody spoke to me. You prayed for him. It is really good. And I asked what happened? The person told me brother there was no hope of this man today. But soon after the prayers, he started shaking up his body and, you know, lifting up his legs and something has happened to him and surely we know now he definitely he will survive. Oxygen was not working. They were pumping the oxygen through that special pressurized uh, uh, whatever the solution may be so that he can breathe the oxygen through the pumping system with the pressure pumping they used to do. The second person also, the third person also and none of them are Christians. None of them are Christians. But prayer made their life totally change. Morning when I prayed, early morning, around 5 30, 4, 6 o'clock, that time when I prayed, the person was very bad. Only yes or no, he was speaking. But when I prayed the second prayer in the afternoon, he was saying, You know, you heard my voice? I said, I'm hearing. He said, Have you heard my voice? I said, Yes, I'm hearing. He said, This voice was not there in the morning. This voice was choked up in the morning. This voice was not clear in the morning. My throat, I said, somebody is holding my throat. But now my throat is clear. I'm able to speak to you very well. Now you pray loudly, I will repeat the prayer. I will also pray with you. I want this healing of Jesus in my life. My brothers, my sister. When the miracle takes place, there should be a signs and wonders in their life. And so also their faith shall be revived. Their faith must revive. Now here is the example the Bible clearly says. That Jesus was among the disciples. All the twelve disciples were together. They were going towards the other shore in verse 25. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying to one another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even to the winds and water, and they obeyed him. He commanded to the wind, he commanded to the water, he commanded to the wind and water and they obey him. Being a disciple of Jesus, seeing so many miracles and signs and wonders, it did not go into their understanding. This is man, he is not a simple man, he is creator of heaven and earth and he speaks to the blind and the blind see. He speaks to the lame and they jump and 
walk. He spoke to the dead and came back to life. He is something great with us. We did not to worry. They did not thought of it. They did not think about that. Though Jesus was with them, they did not think about all the miracles that he performed. All the works that he did. Word that he spoke. They did not understand, but they were afraid about their own lives. My brothers, my sister, seeing that only Jesus asked them, where is your faith? Tonight the same question Jesus is asking you. Probably you are a minister. Probably you are a good boy. Probably you are a good husband. Probably you are a businesswoman. Probably you are a businessman. Probably you are a man who is controlling so much of things in your own office. Maybe you are a woman who has a good intellectual mind and knows to do the things of God and things of all earthly things also. But yet there must be something lacking in you. And for that reason Jesus is asking you, where is your faith? Are you living in faith? This is another message. And there are so many other messages of Jesus Christ on faith. Because he said you must have a faith like a mustard seed. You must know without faith you cannot please God. If you have a faith, you can move the mountains. And not only really that, he said faith is very, very important because it is the seventh gift and the third fruit of the Spirit. Every man should have it because this is the gift of God which is coming to every man and every woman freely. The Bible says three types of Christians are there today. There are three types of Christians, those who come under this category. Where is thy faith? Where is your faith? Number one, the Christians who do, not, who do believe in Christ but very busy in religious practices. They know Jesus Christ. They know what Jesus has done. They know that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. They know that Jesus shed the blood. They know that Jesus was beaten, taken to the cross. Jesus died, was buried, but they rose again. But instead of remembering that, they are so busy in so many religious activities. They are so busy and they are so happy also. Happiness comes to them when they do all manner of religious practices. When they do all manner of worships. They do all type of services. And when they do worship to all other gods and saints and even to the dead and alive, when the Bible says you cannot worship, you cannot go to the grave, you cannot keep on mourning, and you cannot go and, you know, awake the one who is already dead or speak to the dead. But many of us are doing that practices and we are happy, this type of people. The word of the Lord clearly says, and Jesus says to such, such people, saying, asking this question, where is your faith? Where your faith is God? Why you are not understanding the word of God? Why you are not thinking about the word that I have given unto you? Jesus said, no man will be set free unless and until he or she knows the truth. They say, no, we are also doing the work. We are also serving God. We are also praying morning and evening. We are also going to services morning and evening. We are also worshipping all of the gods together. But Jesus is saying that, where is the truth in you? Why you do not have the truth in you? Why you do not understand the word of God? Word of God is the truth. Without the word of God, man is perished. Without the word of God, people are perished. Without the word of God, they are in darkness. Without the word of God, they are in religious practices. That may satisfy them. But it does not satisfy God the Father. It does not satisfy, satisfy God the Son. And they may think that they will enter into the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, no way. No way they shall enter into the kingdom of God. My brothers, my sister, why we cannot enter in case we are busy with so many religious practices? I could name them one by one. Instead of naming them, it's so easy to understand so many religious practices. Bible does not tell any one of you and me, or God does not say, even Jesus did not say, that because you do the religious practices, you will go to heaven. No way. People are traveling abroad. People are going here and there. She will be probably going to UK. I hope that she will find a good church. And when she finds a good church, she will remember this message of the truth. She will remember what Jesus said, where is your faith to worship him in the truth and the spirit. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the word of God and the word of God sets you free. My dear brothers and sisters, Matthew chapter 24, 35. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away. Jesus said, Heaven shall pass away. Read it again. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. 
but my words shall not pass away but my words shall not pass away whatever is given unto us in the book of the holy bible will not pass away whatever god has given unto us in this world will not pass away heavens will pass away here in this chapter back to chapter uh, 24 it is written heaven will pass away okay but actually there are three heavens so that could i boldly tell you that heavens will pass away all will pass away but the word of god is time say it will not pass away it will remain the same generation will pass away but the word of god will remain what do you like to follow word of god or you like to follow religion today also so many people after having so many years of services with us do not understand that god is living jesus is living i should worship jesus in the truth and the spirit and i should know that he is a living god i cannot have idols in my house i cannot worship him in idol form i cannot worship him or worship any other person along with him only jesus only god the father only god the son only god the spirit that's all and nothing else till this fact is not getting into our brains this fact is not coming up to us we feel that it is okay but i am telling you the truth my brothers my sisters let us not vainly live our life like that after you come to know christ after you come to know the word of god after you come to know the same jesus christ our lord we must not lose this faith that's why jesus is asking you where is your faith today where is your faith is your faith in jesus is your faith is in the word is your faith is faith is in the religious practices then you must be able to understand where is my faith today and you must subtract your faith and you must come back to the lord the number two the bible speaks about Christians those who believe in Christ and also believe in his word and are born again and call themselves believers those who are receiving the word of God those who are receiving Jesus Christ those who are accepting Jesus Christ born again in the water and in the spirit and they call themselves believers now for this believer also i am asking you the same question that Jesus has asked you where is your faith Where is your faith? Are you really living in the faith that God has taught you? A day you are here like that, and then some other day you are something different. I may not be able to see you. You may not be able to see my activities, but there is something else, somebody else whose eyes are upon us all the time. Bible clearly says, "Give faith unto the Lord, Lord. If I go and hide myself, you are there. You are there on the mountain top." If I go and hide myself in the hell, there also you are there. I cannot, I cannot. Where shall I go to hide myself? There is no place on the earth. There is no place anywhere that I can hide myself from you. It means David was so clear to tell you and tell me, we cannot hide ourselves from God. We cannot hide ourselves from God. We cannot hide our activities from God. We cannot hide our works from God. We cannot hide our worship from God. We cannot hide our truth and what we are doing. The worship we cannot hide. Being a believer, the Bible tells us this is for the believers. The second thing, the Christians those who accept that Jesus Christ according to the Word, and those who are born again, and those who call themselves believers and do not have faith to walk according to the Word of God. They don't walk according to the word. They don't live according to the word of God. And the Bible clearly says why Jesus was so much concerned about the people like that. Why Jesus was concerned? He was concerned because he was doing the same work and same miracles and signs and wonders with the apostles and disciples. Those were all the time with him, and with him they were walking, seeing the miracles, seeing the signs. seeing the wonders hearing the wonders and signs and thousands of people is to come and be with Jesus Christ our lord after having seen all this yet their faith was not strong they were not doing what exactly Jesus wanted them to do it they were all doing according to their own mind and own thoughts only then what Jesus even at this miracle when he spoke to the storm when he spoke to the lake when he spoke to the bitter wind to become all those became calm and the disciples were there with him why jesus asked this question to them and why jesus is asking this question to the born again people today you must realize 
You're not by chance here today. I'm not by chance preaching. We are hearing the word of God, not by chance. There is a plan of God, and that of God is only one thing that every man should know Jesus Christ, every man should be saved in his soul, every man should go to the kingdom of God, every man and woman shall know the truth, and the truth shall set them free. That is the greatest plan. More than that, there is nothing else. You and I, we are asking silver. You and I, we are asking gold and all other things. But God is always saying, when you are seeking the kingdom of God, when you are walking in the faith, looking unto God, when you are walking in faith, looking unto the kingdom of God, all this will be added to you. All this will be added to you. But we don't have that much of mind. We only want healing. We only want devil. We only want jobs. We only want good clothes. We only want to look good. That's all we are thinking about. And we continue doing all that is not at all good in the sight of God. This message is for the believers. The second step is for the believers. And the Bible clearly says, these disciples were in the boat with him. They saw the miracles and yet they were not knowing who Jesus Christ of Nazareth is. Many believers have accepted Jesus. Many believers are born again in the spirit. Many believers are born again in the water. They have taken the full immersion of water baptism. Every time they tell others, I am a believer. I am a believer. I am a believer. And they keep on saying that. But look at their activities. Look at their worship towards the living God. Look at their faith in Jesus. No. Their faith is not firm. Their faith is still running towards the idol. Their faith is still running to the religious practices. Their faith is running in a different manner. And what exactly is happening? They are not studying in their faith. For them, this is the word that Jesus is asking. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? He was with them. Miracle working God. The one who can speak to the wind and wind can become calm. He can speak to the poisonous wind. He can speak to the lake. And he can speak to the ocean and seas. And everything can become calm. They saw that. And yet, they thought, what manner of man is this? Because they did not understand about Jesus. Have you understood about Jesus? That he is in your house. He is in your heart. He is in your life. He is all around you. Three ways the Lord Jesus remains with us. Number one. Before we are born again, He is all around us. Number two, by this word of God, when we take the full of the water baptism, He is inside us. That's why we say, Lord Jesus, we open our heart, come into our hearts. Come into our heart. Be our Lord and be our Savior. That is the number two. And then we take the full of the water baptism, then Jesus Christ of Nazareth comes in us. Like the Holy Spirit of God comes and descends upon us from the above. And the word of the Lord clearly says, though he was with them, though he did so many miracles, they forgot about it. But tonight, every brother and every sister who is born again, believer, you must know that he is not an army God. He is a creature of heaven and earth. He is a creature of the dead man to bring back to life. Even if four days are past, even if the man is buried in the tomb, he can bring them back to life. That God we serve. Right. Amen. Amen. That Jesus we serve. He's not an ordinary God. He's not an ordinary Savior. You have a mighty and powerful Savior. You have an almighty God. You have a creator of heaven and earth who has created this heaven and earth and on this earth he has created you and me. Therefore you should be able to understand. You should be able to understand. <clears throat> the word of God clearly says the third important thing. The third important thing the Christians those who serve Jesus Christ our Lord and those who are in the ministry they should also understand the question that Jesus is asking where is your faith? Why? Because these people are not normal people. They are apostles, they are prophets, they are evangelists, they are pastors, they are teachers, they are priests, they are deacons, they are all religious leaders and working in different manner for Jesus Christ our Lord. They are working for God and giving importance to denominations. Though they are working for God, though they are working for Jesus, but giving importance to the denomination rather than the truth. They don't give importance to the truth, but they give importance to the denomination. And today God is saying to you and unto me, remember, give more importance to Jesus. Give more importance to God the Father. Give more importance to God the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit of God, the third person. 
This importance you have to give it because without them there is no heavens, there is no earth and you cannot go to heaven with anybody else. When Jesus was risen from the tomb, he met his own mother, sorry, he met the mother, he, he met his mother called Mary and Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Joseph and other Marys and other women. And when he was risen, he said, go and tell them that I have risen. The Bible clearly says that he was explaining to them that whatever he said according to the word, he has completed and he is risen. He was talking about the life and resurrection. He told about life and resurrection to Martha and Mary. But yet Martha and Mary also forgot when Jesus came and Lazarus was there. They said, what is the use of your coming? You should have come two days early, three days early. Our brother was badly sick. But he did not come. Now he is dead. And already buried. My brothers, my sister. There are some Christians those who talk like that. Everything is over brother in my life. Why should I serve God? Why should I become a believer? Why should I follow Jesus Christ? I am a Christian. I can follow everything. But such brothers and sisters. You should be able to understand. If you follow everything. You are not going to go to heaven. If you follow denomination. Surely you are not going to hit to heaven. If you follow denomination and give importance, you are taking out your eyes from Jesus, putting your eyes upon denomination, another big, big mistake of ours. Therefore, the Bible clearly says that when Jesus was resurrected and all the disciples, when they saw him, he also went and appeared unto disciples. He appeared first to mother, his mother called Mary, then he appeared to Mary, the mother of Joseph, then he appeared unto Mary Magdalene, out of whom he has gotten out seven devils, and all of the ladies were there, those who had come to apply spices upon his bed, upon his body. Everyone saw that Jesus is risen. Then Jesus goes to meet whom? Jesus goes to meet whom? Disciples. They are locked themselves in the upper room. Faith is lost. Truth is lost. Reality is lost. Not understood what exactly they should do. If you are firm in the word of God, there is no chance of losing the truth. There is no chance of losing your truth and there is no chance of getting, you know, you know, lost into this world of religion, of denomination, or any other practices that you can think about. When Jesus rose again, he went, he went and met the disciples. And the Bible clearly says, after that, after that, first gospel is Matthew, then Mark, then Luke and then John. After that, the Bible clearly says, which is the other uh, book? After John. Acts of Apostles. Jesus was taken up. Then Jesus remained there 44 days and 44 nights with the apostles, with the people. He met them at the seashore. He met them in the houses. He met so many people all around. The Bible says more than 500 people. He has seen, he has met them, they have seen him. Now after that, Jesus was resurrected. He had, he went to heaven to meet his father. He remained there. During that time, then the work of the apostles started. And the Bible says, that's what you have to remember, I have to remember. As a third stage of apostolic ministry, disciples ministry, those who are following Jesus Christ, they should be able to realize what the Bible says. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. The Bible clearly says, the Acts of Apostles, the Apostles, those who saw Jesus Christ's resurrection, they became bold because Jesus breathed on them. After they were resurrected, the, after they had the resurrection power in them, the Bible says, and the word of God was spread. And greatly the souls were multiplied. What of God was prayed? What of God they were preaching? What of God they were teaching? They were not saying that now you have to worship this way. This way you have to do your religious practices. You have to do like that. No. They were doing the same thing. They were preaching the word of God and teaching the word of God. My brothers, my sister, God is asking you today, where is your faith for only one reason? If you have faith in Jesus, you will stick to the word of God. If you do not have faith in Jesus, then you are gone to the religion. Then you are gone to the denomination. Then you are putting your faith in the pastor. Then you are running around all many, so many pastors. You need heal, health, you need panacea, you need blessings, you need healing. Then you start roaming all around. You lost the reality. 
You lost the foundation of your faith. You lost the truth of your life. You have lost the word of God. And when the man and woman loses the word of God, they lose every matter of faith that they have. But in Acts of Apostle, Apostle did not lose their faith. They started preaching the word of God and teaching the word of God. When Jesus was on the earth, he was also doing the same thing. He was appreciating John the Baptist because John the Baptist was teaching the word of God, preaching the word of God. He was baptizing the people in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and giving them the water baptism and waiting. Waiting for whom? Waiting for Jesus Christ our Lord. The one who is going to come is going to baptize us. The one who is going to come is going to fill us with the Holy Spirit. The one who is going to come will fill us with the fire and the Holy Ghost power. That's why Jesus appreciated him. Today Jesus will appreciate you and me asking this question because if you are remaining in the word of God, the Bible says in Acts chapter 12 verse 24. Acts chapter 12 verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Let me go fast now because I'm going to pray for everyone. I will pray at the end of the day for everybody, those who are here, those who need the prayer, surely will pray, keeping everyone to be seated on this chair. The Bible clearly says in Acts chapter 12 verse 24, And the word of God grew and multiplied. The word of God grew and multiplied. Is it happening in your life? Is it happening in your family? Is word of God multiplied in your family? Are you able to stand up and pray and say, Brother, I have read the Bible three times. Five months I was here and five months, brother, I did not go to work, but I strengthened myself in the word of God. Are you able to stand and say like that? Nobody has a time. They were all the time in YouTube. What is coronavirus? How we can avoid coronavirus? If anybody gets sick, what shall be done? Those people die. Who is first in coronavirus? Who is second? Which country is third? Which country is fourth? Oh, now India is like that. All this news one. Nobody gave impact to their soul by the word of God and thought that we shall be strong in the word of God. Look at the apostles. The Bible says, and the word of God grew, and word of God mighty time. In Isaiah chapter 13, verse 49. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. The word of God was spreading, 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 spreading. Today also, you being a disciple of Jesus Christ, disciple means follower. It does not mean you are in a special category of work of the Lord. No. You are supposed to be a disciple who can pull your husband, who can pull your wife, who can pull your son, who can pull your daughter and give them the understanding through the word of God. You cannot just be like that saying that I am going to this church and that church. No. You are doing a wonderful work. You are knowing the truth today. You are walking in the truth. No one will stand with you but God will come because of the truth. Spread the truth in your family. Read the word of God. Bible tells us says, actually in Acts chapter 19 verse 20. Acts chapter 19 verse 20. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Look at this word. I want to explain to you. So the word of God grew mightily and prevailed. The word of God started growing. The word of God, they preached about healing, healing started growing. They preached about deliverance, deliverance started taking place. I would say Jesus Christ the man when he saw the crowd, he had compassion upon them. He had compassion upon them. He laid his hand and delivered everyone and set them free from the captivity of the devil. He healed them all and delivered them all. My brothers, my sister, deliver us from evil, healing from God. God did it. Jesus Christ the man was doing this ministry. And so also, when Jesus was taken up to heaven, then the apostles started doing this ministry. They did not run away. They were actually a little scared. But now they understood that Jesus is alive and he has given us the mission to preach the gospel and teach the gospel. Let us increase the word of God. Let us pray with the word of God. Let us give the word of God to the, you know, to the city of God. Let us preach the word of God in all around the cities and villages and they were doing that work. And the Bible says, when they were doing the work, the mightily the word of God prevailed. And so also many people understood the word of God, they grew mightily in the word of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. In Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 9, it is a very very important thing that you should be understand. That this word of God is not changed and it will not be changed by anybody else. Let us hear this word. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. 
wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Word of God is not bound. Word of God is not chained. They may not allow you to read the word. They may burn the Bibles. They may destroy the work of the Lord through the word of God. But it cannot be bound. They can, they can delete some of the words. They can add some of the words. But they cannot bind the word of God. Word of God is free. It will hit them. It every man and every woman's soul and spirit and body. It will bring the healing of God. When you learn the word of God, you can preach the word of God without the Bible. And therefore the Bible says the word of God is not bound. John chapter 8 verse 51. Yes, we observe that the word of God speaks and spread everywhere and prevail in the days of the apostle. In the days of apostle, word of God multiplied, word of God prevailed, word of God remained, word of God was going on. So also it shall happen in your life. You shall not lose your faith and you shall continue in your faith. For John chapter 1, sorry, John chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Let us not forget the final words I am closing now. The Bible clearly says, first John, sorry, John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. When you are holding the Bible, you are holding God. When you are reading the Bible, you are reading God. When you are holding the Bible, you are reading the Word of God. You are reading the Bible, you are holding Jesus Christ in your hands. Don't easily think that, oh, I am just taking the Bible and doing No. Don't be afraid if anybody sees you carrying the Bible. Don't be afraid in the family that if you are carrying the Bible and reading the Bible at home. Don't say that my husband does not like it. My wife does not like it. Brother, I will pray or I will read it quietly, therefore I go into the kitchen and I read it there. No! You shouldn't do that. The creature is the same, Jesus Christ our Lord. God the Father for you and for your husband. For your husband and for your wife. Do not be afraid about anybody when you read the word of God. You want the power of God? You want to see the miracle of God? You want to increase your faith? You don't want to be afraid about? Today God is saying, where is your faith? Your faith is in the word and your faith has to be in the word of God. And therefore today we make a good decision because the word of God is God. First John chapter 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was... First John chapter 1, 1. Yeah. That which was from the beginning which we have heard. From the beginning that we have heard. Which we have seen. Which we have also seen. Now see, the word of God clearly says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, with our eyes, which, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled it. And our hands have touched him. Our hands have seen all the things. And then the Bible says, concerning of the word of life. Of the word of life. About whom this is spoken? The John, the Apostle John is a wonderful writer. John the Apostle writes about Jesus Christ our Lord. We have handled him. We have touched him. We have seen him. We have talked to him. He is nobody else. But he is the living word of God. He is the word of life. My brothers, my sisters, that's what you have to understand. The Bible clearly says, he is the word of life. Jesus is the word of life. You want to find Jesus? Get into the book of the Holy Bible. You want to see the miracle? Get into the word of God. Don't call Jesus God here. No. You take the word of God, Jesus will come to you. You read the word of God, miracle will happen to you. Make a good decision. Jesus is asking you and me, where is thy faith? My faith is in the word. My faith is in the Lord Jesus. My faith is in the laws of God. My faith is in the teachings of God. My faith is in the commandments of God. Finally, my brother, first Peter chapter 4, the Bible clearly says, you must have fellowship with Christ and Christ alone and nobody else. Now on the earth, this is what is given unto you and me if you write to be a true Christian, that your faith must be in Christ Jesus alone. Then number two, your faith must be in his suffering. That he suffered and died. His death was not done. So your faith must be in his suffering. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. The Bible says, if you reign with him, you must also suffer with him. Suffer for all the problems of trial and tribulation. But don't, don't murmur about it. The third thing, the Bible says, if you will live with him, you must also die with him. Now what type of death the Jesus Christ of Nazareth or the Word of God is speaking about? If you live with him, you shall die with him. 
When you live with him, you die with him, it means you bury yourself in the water baptism. That is called the burial of your own self. But other persecution, other trials and tribulations are true. And the Bible clearly says, and when you are buried with the baptism, a true burial is taking place. And remember, because Jesus rose again on the third day, you shall also rise again. The one who has taken the water baptism, surely he is not going to remain in the grave. He is so quickly risen up. He will be risen as Jesus Christ of Nazareth rose again on the third day. Therefore Jesus said, believe in me and believe in my father also. If you see me, you can see my father. If you do not see me, you cannot see my father. My brothers, my sister, remember this word of God. Today Jesus is asking you this question. You have to fulfill this question only by your faith. And living by faith and doing the word of God in your life. And God will surely bless you. Finally, let us all stand up please. A simple prayer. Let us all say it together. Say after me. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. For your word that you gave us. For your word that you gave us. Today I increase my faith in you. Today I increase my faith in you. Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. Help me to have faith in you. I declare. My life is in Jesus. In my heart, Jesus Christ of Nazareth lives. I have peace, joy, and happiness. And there is a great power for me. I will increase my faith. I will increase my faith. Believe in the word of God. Believe in the laws of God. Commandments of God. And I will try my level best to live accordingly. Father, help me. Father, help me. Jesus, guide me. Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, Holy you give me victory and, and success. My life is in you. I will not be afraid. I will have faith in you. In faith, I shall see the miracle of God. I will be strong. I will be happy. I will have riches. The Almighty power will live in me. My mind will be like Christ. I will be victorious. I will be successful. Because I put my faith in Jesus Christ my Lord. As Jesus said, where is your faith? I say to the Lord today, I say to the Lord today, my faith is in you. My faith is in you. In Jesus' mighty name. I believe. I pray. Let's all say Amen. God bless you all.